Okay, hi brothers and sisters. Here we are for our study on wisdom. I'm not sure I'll get through to 12. I'm not sure I get the whole four chapters in this one go. Um, I'll try to, um, but if I can't, I can't. If I get tired, my thoughts will tend to get tired. And I won't be making the um, comments that I need to be making. Um, sorry I didn't move it. I'm just, I'm tired. I'm short on time. I did make all of my comments on the side of the pages here. Um, so we'll just start. <clears throat> and if I feel like uh, stopping at some point, um, then we'll just stop and pick it up in the next video, hopefully. Um, okay. Excuse me, I got a little bit of gas. Um, so we begin our study today in Wisdom Chapter 9. Um, so, O oh God of my, we'll say, mothers, all right? Um, we're talking about wisdom with her daughter, who she actually gave dominion. And by dominion to her daughter, we mean over the law. She had the dominion of the law, to give the law. And so we actually see her speaking to him, saying, we give you dominion over, the watchers was giving him dominion over this creation. And, but you understand, but it was through her law, right, that he was gave that dominion, and he turned on that law. Arbitrarily, we see that word arbitrarily, that means to, on a whim, to cast off um, this authority that was actually gave by God, we're told. Um, and they just cast it off on a whim and said, oh, no, 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 we'll write the laws the way what we want, and we'll do what we want. So, in a sense, we lose her um, as the speaker when she's the one that becomes the addressed one because mother loses her scepter in the earth, right? These wise women eventually begin to turn to husband and then he takes full authority of even her domain. In her domain, we were told, were the law. And by that, it gives her full, you know, control over the dominion um, to the degree that, you know, he's supposed to be exalting that law. And we find the beginnings of those laws in Deuteronomy chapter 4, where she says, I give you the Ten Commandments to follow, right? And um, he didn't follow them. So let's begin in chapter 9. Sorry, oh God, my mothers and Lord of mercy, who hath made all things with thy words. Um, and she did. Um, and ordained her... So again, we'll take the her first. And ordained her through thy wisdom that she should have dominion over the creatures which thou has made. So she had full dominion over this entire creation and she had that control through the law. That's how her control through this entire creation came. It was through her wisdom of the law that had been taught by her mother wisdom. Then she was gave in covenant. And so then you can almost hear her saying, and ordain man through thy wisdom. So it comes down to her that was gave in covenant, saying this to him now. And ordained her through thy wisdom that he should have dominion over the creatures which thou hast made. You see how we get that stack going on? Um, but then we see her beginning to address her when it's got him, when she turned away, right, from mother's law and turned to hubby as if he was was the creator of all things and gave the law and you know it went on and on so you know you got to look at it through those sorry through those types of eyes um so and that he should have dominion over the creatures which I was made and she will go back to her and order the world according to equity and righteousness and execute judgment with an upright heart and that was what her law was to do and he was to follow that law. And so through her law, we would have equity, righteousness, and we would execute judgment with an upright heart. And he was to follow that law. That's right. He was to uphold that law in this creation. So give me wisdom that sitteth by thy throne, and reject me not from among thy children. We see her saying this over and over um, in the Old Testament, especially in the Psalms, you see her saying it a lot. She's saying, you know, I have not forgot thee, mother. I have upheld thy righteous law in my heart, and I have never forgotten about you. She kind of says it back to her. 
And uh, then you get the mock of the men saying, oh, she says she's the daughter of God, then fine, let God defend her. She's the child of God. And so we get this idea here, give me wisdom that sitteth by thy throne and reject me not from among thy children. You can also say that of the man. He, through Joshua, was saying, please don't reject mankind. Don't reject us based on what the first Adam did. Give us another chance. Let us show you what we're capable, truly capable, of becoming and doing. Um, so, for I, thy servant, and will say, daughter Israel, am a feeble person, and of a short time, and too young for the understanding of judgments and laws. So this kind of takes me back um, to the understanding that she was young when she was gave in covenant. Um, and so she says, and of a short time, and too young for the understanding of judgments and laws. There's this idea that she was actually murdered in the marriage chamber in the sense, not in the marriage covenant sense that we have, but in the sense that she was the spirit that was to rule. Um, this is bad. I'm, too, I'm paying too much attention to my hair. Um, that she was, it was her spirit that was to rule, right, his heart, this kingdom right that was what her job was um so in a sense she, that spirit was murdered in that covenant that was ordained by god um we also can have that understanding that we don't live very long you know even say somebody gets to be a hundred years old just say you're a hundred years old or 110 you know in in the age of you know god that's a child right and so, so, you know, in some sense, we kind of have this excuse, well, we're really too young to understand. We, we haven't been around that long. Um, you could take the hundred years, but then you can take the cycle of how long this creation is said to be, which is not very old. It's a relatively young creation, they would have you believe. Um, and so you kind of get that embedded in that verse here. For though, um, no, for I thy servant... And daughter Israel am a feeble person and of a short time and too young for the understanding of judgment and laws. We know it was her. They struck the judge upon the cheek. Gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. We get that verse in Micah chapter 5 verse 1. Gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. So we're coming kind of back around to the Shulamite in that verse saying gather your troops. Get your troops together. That's your, your inheritance, your scepter. Um, these daughters of Israel, of the Scions, that's your branch. Um, so you get that. But they struck her on the cheek and silenced her on the hills of Israel. We're told that. When they captured Israel, the feminine aspect is what you're going to get in there, the lioness, Ariel was under siege, right? And we get that she was under siege in Isaiah 29. They went on after Ariel intentional, and that's the lioness of God. Look the word up. It's not a lion. Ariel don't even sound masculine. It sounds very much feminine. And it is. Look it up. It means the lioness of God. And you'll get the lioness in Ezekiel 19, who had scepters that was flourishing due to the, to the amount of water. And the water was her word, her law, that they were being raised up under. And um, every time they had a strong king that would... Um, rule through these scepters willingly he had an obedient heart unto god and unto that law of god um they would come in and they would ensnare these branches these scepters these rulers and by extension the kings that would accept this scepter to rule through and we get that understanding when out in the wanderings the sons just kept taking these wives from the surrounding adamic nations because they loved the pollution that they were bringing in Balaam says to Balak, send your harlot, send your women in and seduce the men and we'll take the right hand of God out, the scepter of God out, will pollute the nation of Israel, the daughters inside that nation. And um, so they did. But we see when the men rejected that, God says, fine, you don't want my scepter to rule for her. I'll cast her out into the lands of the Gentiles. And that's where she is today. The real daughters of Israel from understanding the word. If you don't want to take what the word of God says um, and, and reason it out, fine, you don't have to. You, ha you can believe whatever you want. But God says, I believe in Jeremiah 4, 
these branches are not mine. They're not my rulers. They're not my daughters. You took in covenant the ones that, that tickled your ears and told you just what you wanted to hear, which was poison in the gut. It's wormwood. That's your law that's poisoning you. You did not want my scepters, my righteous daughters, to rule through. You cast them out. You cast them out into a land not inhabited. And that was the Gentile lands. And it means not inhabited by the Spirit. That's kind of your understanding. Your she goat there you get also. Cast off to bear the sins of Israel upon her head for what they were doing. And it was casting her off. And she, she paid the price for that. Um, she ended up out in bondage. That's right. But God also says to the men, fine, you don't want my scepter, you won't have her. I'll take her from you. But it's also the way that we understand Israel begins um, to, to be able to incorporate the Gentiles under her as her children. And we get that understanding in Isaiah 49. And it's Ephraim claiming them. And it's not a dear son, dear son, they may have forgotten about you, but I haven't. No, it's my dear daughter that got forgot about that she was the scepter that you were to rule through and it was her law that you were to um, uphold in the land. And they did not. Okay, so, for though a man, no, a woman, a man, be never so perfect among the children of men, yet if thy wisdom be not with him, he shall be nothing regarded. And he is nothing regarded right now in the heavens. He's not regarded as anything great. Because... It's only when the scepter, as the Holy Spirit in the land, right, recaptures, I guess in a sense you'd have to say the heart of man, right? He fell for the harlot that tickled his little ears, told him just what he wanted to hear. She becomes the outcast that no man sought a covenant with, right? It didn't tickle his ears what she was saying. She was a strong individual and she expected the same from him in this covenant, but he wasn't. He ended up being a wimp all the way. You know, you little women, you're weak and you're under, well, you shouldn't have to yoke somebody who's already weak under law upon law upon law, which we actually see them doing in the, test, in the Old Testament. Um, so, for though a man be never so perfect among the children of men, yet if thy wisdom be not with him, he shall be nothing regarded. It's only when he has wisdom right back by his side, governing the heart, governing the law, that he then becomes regarded as something important. Yeah, that's what that verse is saying. Um, so, let's see. Thou hast chosen me to be sovereign. Now we're going to go back to her. Um, they would say king, queen. Uh, you know, from all indications in my studies, um, king was a derived word by the men. Um, they needed a word that placed a great amount of importance and authority uh, in a particular title. And so they made up the word king from what I can understand in the Old Testament, uh, right along with the gods. And so the word king becomes incorporated right into the names of their gods, Melech, uh, Moloch, Melech, uh, Marduk. Um, these are derived from the same, if, if I get it right, from the same uh, noun, word, whatever you want to say, as king is. And so you get kind of the understanding that, that this title, honorific title, great title, puff puff, of, of the word king is also a made up word. Um, so you could say queen is also a made up. Uh, we may use the word lord in the sense of an honorific title by God. Uh, placing you in a position of authority, but not in authority that we have come to understand authority in the earth. It was a, a very gentle um, rule, we're told Shiloh was the gently flowing waters of Shiloh. We're told the kings cut her bands asunder. We told it that they took um, um, a plan, made a plan uh, against these women uh, in Psalm 83 to cut her cords and her bands asunder. Also in Psalm 2 we see the kings doing this. Uh, because they were going to write their own law. That, that's basically your understanding. And hers was a gentle law. We began with these ten commandments uh, that we were to uphold. 
Um, and if we could have upheld them, wow, it would have led us to, I think, great wonders in the land, one of them being eternal life, but they couldn't do that. Uh, so we end up dying in the womb of Sheol. That's right. That's what we end up doing. Um, so, though thou hast chosen me to be, we'll say sovereign, the sovereign Lord, because there is a sovereign um, that the children, uh, in wi you know, with wisdom, she would be the sovereign that you would turn to um, for righteous decrees, righteous laws, um, that we would all, in equality, be subjective to. Um, in a mother's love, I don't think there's anything greater than a mother's love. Father has a great love. I'm not saying father don't have a great love for the, his children. I just don't think he can comprehend what a mother can when she has to tra travail to bring forth a child. She carries that child with her. There's a bond that gets developed that a, a man, a father just can't comprehend, just cannot understand it. And she will have it till, till she dies with those children. She'll have those memories of carrying that child, of travailing to bring that child first, forth. It's just, it's always going to be there in your heart. And that is why she's the sovereign. I truly believe that that's why she's appointed sovereign. Because she understands her children to a degree that, I'm sorry, a father just cannot. Just cannot. So, thou hast chosen me to be sovereign of thy people and a judge of thy sons and daughters. And that is in Micah 5. Thou hast commanded me to build a temple upon thy holy mount and an altar in the center wherein thou dwellest, a resemblance of the holy tabernacle. So we're told in the Old Testament, this is why I say it, God told Moses the dimensions of the tabernacle. Now I'm going to tell you, God didn't tell it to Moses, God told it to the presence. And the presence told it to Moses. Okay, that's how I'm going with this. She was the sovereign that he was to adhere to. And Moses would meet with her. He would. Um, and Moses was one of the few that did uh, uphold her and uphold her law, I believe. Um, but she was the one that gave him the tabernacle and happened to believe the tabernacle that she was given the dimensions to was on the house in the force of Leb Lebanon. That's where the government of God, the congregation of women, they're identified as, in Psalm 68, that went on, met on the Mount North. The north. And again, we get that north idea. And that has so many ideas wrapped up in it. North. Um, it was snowing in. It says Zelman. I think that's the north mountain now. I, I believe it's referencing when she scatters the kings in the north. That's right. Off of her mountain. And the mountain called in Psalm, I think it's Psalm 68. Yeah. You will get the verse. She scattered the kings when it was snowing. On Mount Zalman. Well, we know it snows in the north, right? We know she hid her face. Well, hiding has the idea also in the north. We know that she turned to be his enemy, but at the same time she was with him. <laughs> um, so when they turn away from this lie in the land, and they begin to exalt the righteousness of the old cast daughter, then she turns for their part once again, and she will defend them, and she will protect them. Um, and it begins, apparently, with the scattering of the kings in the north. On uh, North Zalman, is what it says. I hope my, cal my camera's recording right. It seems to be um, not flowing like it needs to. So anyway, um, that's what I think uh, when it comes to the tabernacle here, which thou hast prepared from the beginning. So we know now that there's two tabernacles in existence. We know that he tore hers down. We kind of get that understanding um, in, uh, was it Psalm 74, I think, or Psalm 78. They were men, they were like axemen welding axes in a forest. And they were really chopping these daughters out of existence. They were just getting rid of their tabernacle and any understanding that woman actually was represented by a separate tabernacle, which from all understanding was called the house in the force of Lebanon. Uh, and from there, from all understanding, she would flow like a living water into his tabernacle and instruct him with the law from God. 
that's the understanding we get. Then we see men like uh, Solomon going in, <clears throat> taking control of the house and the force to Lebanon. Hezekiah was another king that did this. Um, and he actually takes up the daughter of Pharaoh up into this house, I believe. And so we kind of maybe can link the idea, you might eat my waters, Pharaoh. Um, <clears throat> because we know that the women inside e uh, Egypt um, bowed to male gods. And you can say, well, there was a whole pantheon of female gods. From all understanding, Nebuchadnezzar uh, arrayed himself, it says, in the garments that come from Egypt. And he left that nation in peace. Well, he would leave it in peace because um, he began to bow to the same gods that they were. Well, then Nebuchadnezzar becomes the golden head on the idol in Daniel 2. And the Jews were brought in, or the Israelites, it says Jews were brought into bondage under the Babylonian kings, and there they wrote their great Torah, which was what fed out to the four corners of the world and really contaminated our law system. Um, though they don't want to admit that it's the Torah. Yes, it is. It was the Ten Commandments we were to uphold, first and foremost. And those were called the gently flowing waters of Shiloh, at which you reject it. But you also see the scepter between Judah's feet called Shiloh, which was in the territory of Ephraim. And we identified this in the last video, that that was so where the feminine come from, the divine feminine. And when they tore her house down, they tore her tabernacle down, the men said to her, hey, you can come worship at our altar, in our tabernacle. So then we come up with this ridiculous marriage covenant where she's now under him and must submit to his head. Well, is there any wonder why? They actively sought out her house, her tabernacle, her government, her law, and the women and removed it from all understanding and knowledge until she grants the spirit upon these daughters pulled out to be her scepter once again from all understanding. And we're being a long-winded on this one. We're being long-winded on this. Um, so <clears throat> that's the tabernacle. Um, and it tells us that he was to base the tabernacle below on the one above. And then they'll tell you in the New Testament that Jesus represented that tabernacle as if there's only one tabernacle. There happens to be two. <laughs> and uh, that's why you'll get Joshua, because Joshua's words gets mixed in there with their idol, Jesus, that they said, hey, we can make this work, right? And we'll, get our, we'll keep our idol standing, right? The Greeks knew what was going on. They did. Uh, as did a lot of the men, but then we're told over time that they lose sight of this, what they did. And that eventually they literally fall into the snare, the pit, the womb of Sheol, <laughs> um, that they lay for us to fall into. They end up falling into it and they can't escape it. And the reason is because men don't deliver children. They don't give you a new body. They can't. Um, and they get trapped in that snare that, hey, you know, yeah, man's God, we can, he's going to deliver us, he, he, he. They, they got trapped into their own snare, they did. Um, and it states that they won't escape it, but that she will. It does so say that multiple times in the Old Testament, that she won't fall for the lie. And while she does so for a period of time, God says the Lord will awaken as one that's been asleep and, and drunk on wine. And then she awakens off of this. And the Lord that awakens there is 136. And we identified that as daughter Israel's number or daughter Zion's number. Because it is the same Lord identified as a dove, as an ash heap. That's your heifer analogy. Ephraim is derived ephir, afer, from ashes. We also get the house of Bethel. Bethel, uh, they call it Bethlehem Ephrata in Micah chapter 5. Well, it's not that. The more research you dig back, Bethel meant house. And this was the house of Ephraim. Ephrata is a female name when you go in and look that word up. And uh, I, ha I was going to do an extensive video on that, and I still might do that. I have all the notes from that that I wrote down. Um, but it was clear that they tried to alter it enough that you would lead Bethlehem into Judah's territory. No, it was the house of Eph Ephrata where the eternal one was to come from. And uh, so I'm losing sight here. But the point is, is she awakens at the end and remembers 
there's a word in the New Testament, and I couldn't help but see my name embedded in it. It was 34:15. It meant remember, remember, remember. And it has the idea of self-remembrance. It has that idea behind it. Um, that the Spirit is, you know, is going to cause us to remember um, these forgotten truths by reasoning them out through the Spirit of Wisdom. Uh, that's my understanding. Um, so the house, the tabernacle, they can say Jesus represented that. Jesus don't represent my tabernacle. He can't. I'm female. I'm a woman. <laughs> um, so we know there's two tabernacles below. We do. Yes, while the male tends to represent um, the tabernacle and the female, the spirit, there's still two. There's still two tabernacles. And the spirit came from the house in the forest of Lebanon as the government of God. And like again, the key of David would flow through the gateway right into his tabernacle and give him the law. Um, okay. So that's why the tabernacle here, I say, and it's Moses, and God says this one is the same, based on the same one above, this tabernacle. So once we establish that there's actually the house in the force of Lebanon that actually represents her tabernacle, we get the palace and mention in Song of Songs chapter 8. Um, so, which I was prepared from the beginning. We also are told Zebulon, uh, not Zebulon, sorry, that's a tribe name. Um, Zerubbabel, um, her hand began the temple and her hand will finish it. So she's the beginning, she's the end. She is. Um, and it is in regards to the house in the forest of Lebanon. Um, and that's because wisdom is being sent to you from above to help govern you. And he says this back here. Uh, For though a man be never so perfect among the children of men, yet if thy wisdom be not with him, he shall be nothing regarded. You're only going to be regarded as precious, worth, you know, of worth, when you have wisdom by your side. You're not going to have that idea that God's going to value you without her. Um, so, down we go. Verse 9. And wisdom was with thee, which knoweth thy works, and was present when thou, God, made us the world and knew what was acceptable in thy sight and right in thy commandments and she did it was her firstborn we've identified the firstborn as the daughter of the kingdom um oh send her out of thy holy heavens and from the throne of thy glory that being present she may labor with me they want to stick this a heat it doesn't make sense it's not adding up that i may know what is pleasing unto thee well, the only way he could know what was pleasing to God was to know the daughter. Where do we get that? We know it's her that was sent from above because of Job. I mean, we've identified it on this channel uh, over and over again. Let's read it. It's Job 30 or 30. I can never remember if it's 30 or 31. Right, it's 31. So Job 31, verse 1 and 2. Who was sent again? Y you can say he all you want. Um, but it does say, O oh, send her out of thy holy heavens. Where do we get it in the Bible that she did? Job 31, verse 1. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? But he did. He thought upon the harlot that would bow to him, build him up as God. Uh, for what portion of God um, is thee from above? Is there from above? In what inheritance of the Almighty from on high? It just told you. It was the, the spirit of the original covenant, your wife, which you get in Malachi chapter 2. Uh, Micah chapter 2. Yeah. Yet is she the wife of thy youth, of the original covenant. Wisdom, she, that was sent from above. And why? Oh, send her out of thy holy heavens. They agreed to take her in covenant, and then they turned on her. That's right, the first Adam turned on her. O oh, send her out of thy holy heavens and from the throne of thy glory, that being present she may labor with me, that I may know what is pleasing unto thee. Um, so again, not only does it take us to Job, but it takes us backtrack to chapter 2 of wisdom. And we come up against some issues here in chapter 2. Um, Therefore let us lie and wait for the righteous, because she is not for our turn. She wouldn't support them in their lie. 
And they got really mad at the fact that she would not do this. Um, and she is clean contrary to our doings. She upbraideth us with our offending the law. And they were. They were going against her mother's law, her law that she had been taught. And objective to our infamy, the transgressings of our education. They wouldn't even listen to her on the law. Though they agreed to be in covenant with her. The wife of the original covenant, it says in Micah chapter 2. Malachi chapter 2. Um, she professes to have the knowledge of God and she calleth herself the child of God. That's actually repeated in the Psalms. She does. Um, she was made to reprove our thoughts and she is grievous unto us even to behold for her life is not like others and her ways are of another fashion and she is to say you know women did become just like men we get that understanding of course Isaiah 54 1 uh, he marries himself a woman who will spout just what he wants spout it right back she's just like him she's cut right out of him yeah but when she was gay she was very different she was of another fashion that's right she was a woman, <laughs> made her in her mother's image. And so she reproved them for the transgressings of the covenant that they were doing, and they did not like her. They did not like her. Um, so, um, for she knoweth and understandeth all things, and she shall lead me soberly in my doings, and preserve me in her power. And that's what we got yesterday, uh, on the video I posted yesterday. Um... She was your preserver in the beginning, but you didn't want her. Um, and then it's told she becomes your ruin. You wanted, you wanted a woman like you, just like you, that'll spout back what you want? That'll bring on your own ruin. You want a woman that'll bow at your feet and tell you you're God? That'll bring on your own ruination, but that's what you wanted. So she'll spout what you want, right? And yet it's told us she could have preserved you. I could have preserved you. I could have protected you from all of these horrible things that have come on your world. But you didn't want my protection. No. Um, so, again, verse 11. For she knoweth and understandeth all, say, all things. And she shall lead me soberly in my doings and preserve me in her power. So shall my works be acceptable. And then shall I judge thy people righteously and be worthy to sit in my mother seat so again we're going back to the feminine that left her role so like i say you get this double you get this overlay here him yes in the beginning if he had a listen but you get her now because she did not listen right um so so shall my works be acceptable like when i've turned back to my mother return return oh shulamite what might we see when the shulamite returns as it were the company of two armies then shall I judge thy people righteously. We're told she's gave full dominion back. Goes back to the stronghold of daughter Zion. We're told that in uh, Micah chapter 4, I believe. Um, so my work will be acceptable. And then shall I judge thy people righteously and be worthy to sit in my mother's seat. Isaiah 52. Um, shake thyself out of the dust of the earth, O daughter Zion, and take back your throne. That's right. Um, for what man is it? that can show the counsel of God, or who can think what she will, or what what the will of the Lord is. Well, according to that, the daughter's will at the end, when she picks us back up out of the dust of the earth, and reclaims us once again as her scepter, and teaches us her ways. That's who's going to be able to do this. It's not a man. A fool does not lift up his mouth in the gate. It's the daughter's that have to do it in defense of us all in defense of man um, she has to be able to defend you and part of the way that she does that is to reteach you the law of heaven the ordinance of heaven the way that heaven always ruled God always ruled on earth and it was not through bowed down at the feet of an idol waiting for a man to get you and and you leave what you've been taught in this world that you bow to idols and um, it's not the way it works right it's she that's going to know so for what man is it that can show you the counsel of God or who can think what the will of the Lord is you ought to have those written on your heart for the thoughts of mortal men are miserable and our devices 
are but uncertain and you are you you can say oh we know for certain we know for certain we read the bible we know our history we know our our end we know no you don't you're not listening to the holy one you won't listen to her how could you possibly know anything you can't even reason it's wisdom that allows you to do that um, and so far a male god and all the crap that they've taught me off the pulpit has never added up it does not explain my existence there's two tabernacles here, male and female. God says, let's make them in our image. You get a male and a female. Then it says in the New Testament, you are without excuse not to understand my Godhead and manifest it in what I created. The female is the life giver, not father. I mean, it's plain and simple. You can see that with your own eyes. She forms the clay in her womb. She gives life to it. She gives the nourishment to it. And we're also told in Song of Songs 4, verses 12 to 15, that the water was to come from the spouse of the original covenant. That's what we're told when we identify it all. Um, so for the corruptible body presses down the soul, and the earthy tabernacle weigheth down the mind that muses upon many things. And we do. We're supposed to muse. But we're supposed to use the Spirit of God. To wisdom to do that with <clears throat> uh, and when you're bowed down at the feet of the idol with your eyes shut tight your ears closed up you're unable to hear um, that reasoning that sense of reasoning because number one you simply won't listen you won't hear it uh, and so Satan's pretty clever on that count we know who Satan is that's first Adam um, anyway uh, who has the time uh, the devil knows not to steal our time. So, and hardly do we guess aright at things that are upon earth. And we don't. It, it's crazy what religion teaches you about this world. It makes no sense at all. None whatsoever. Uh, we've established that in our videos. So, and hardly do we guess aright at things that are upon earth. And with labor do we find the things that are before us. But the things that are in heaven. Who has searched them out? Well... Who has the time, number one? Right? They tell, we don't have time. I mean, look look at the thickness of this Bible. Who has time to search them out? Who has, who has time to ponder, um, you know, the things that could be in heaven and, and why things are the way they are? Who really has the time? So the devil's pretty, you know, clever, you know, because there's so many things that can come in and steal your time. And I'll tell you, that time is precious. It's the time that you are to be using to understand things. It is the time for you to be guessing aright at things that are upon the earth. It is, this is the time that you are gave to do that. Right? And the devil's really clever. He knows how to take that time from you. To fill it with all kinds of foolishness. Um, he knows how to throw answers at you that makes no sense. But that you'll quickly grab onto and go, hey, that's it, that's it. I don't got to look no more. <laughs> Um, who wants to waste their time, you know, thinking about the deeper, deeper things when they'll throw you an answer and it'll go, ah, hey, that'll do. Um, especially when it's so complicated to, when you pick that Bible up and you read it and you go, well, I can't figure it out. I can't understand. I ain't got time to reason. Look at it. Look how much information there is. Um, and yet we need to focus on that one thing that we're told in the New Testament, that there is a little book sealed up in there. And that little book is your little book of truth. Once you get onto that thread that's weaved there, it kind it's pretty quick. God will show you it pretty quick. Uh, yeah, it takes time. It's been like a, a while for me now. It's you know going on 15 years, something like that, 12 to 15 years um, in this climb, in this study where I sincerely wanted the truth and I really began to dig for it and look for it. Um, so yeah, in one sense, it takes time. And I guess in another sense, 15 years in, in the blink of an eye, um, and certainly in the idea of eternity, is not that long of a stretch of time um, to really be searching for the deeper truths. Really, it's not. Um, and yet, that's really what you are allotted this time for. Yeah, you are. Uh, to prove yourself, in a sense, to God. To rightly divide the word of truth. Um, you know, we're, picture us all in classrooms. <laughs> You know, um, I never did great in school. I hate at school. I, I never liked school. I got my grade 12, yeah. 
Um, I didn't go on to higher education. It wasn't an interest of mine. I worked on a ranch for years. Um, that's what I did. And, um, you know, it's just, picture yourself in this class, and it's like, but at the head of the class is, you know, something greater to be attained, you know. And God says, I don't say you can't participate. I don't, I don't say you can't participate. You know, to the lowest of you, to the highest of you, you can all run this race. And you can all attain for yourselves whatever you choose to put the time into. And um, that's how I kind of look at it. And yet at the same time, um, yeah, we, we're chosen, but we are chosen because we choose to put that time there. And I realize at the same time um, that it is easier for some of us to go searching, you know, that out. I do. I do understand that. Um, but the fact is we're all gave the opportunity um, to understand the word and to rightly divide it if we choose to um, run in this race. And you do have that choice. You can run in it or you can just sit off to the wayside, especially with your ears covered, your eyes shut tight, going, I got it, I got it, you know, and you don't, you, you gave up running in the race a long time ago. So, um, I'm babbling, sorry. Um, things that are before us, but the things that are in heaven, who has searched them out? And thy counsel, who has known? Except thou giveth the wisdom, and send thy Holy Spirit from above. And she does. But she's going to place it on those of us who has this deeper desire to understand that truth and also has this idea with inside of us, and this is how it began for me, that something was wrong with the doctrine. It was not right what they were teaching us. It did not factor in the woman in any sense of the word other than to say she sinned and that's why man being so clean and godlike had to come and wash her. That was, that was the whole understanding gave. And that I had to bow to him because he was more or less better than me. And I'm like, well, this doesn't sound like God to me. Then they tell me how God is this way and that way. And yet, that's not God. It just did not reason. And so you're going to be gave when you begin to truly question these things in sincerity in your heart. And love God enough to recognize that God ain't found in that religious lie. Um, so... And thy counsel who is known, except thou giveth wisdom, and send thy Holy Spirit from above. For so the ways for so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed, and men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee, and were saved through wisdom. So the daughter, that's a choice one of her mother, right? Which is the eternal spirit. So, and she, so she's telling us how we're taught. We're taught through the Spirit. Things that are pleasing unto thee and we're saved through wisdom. Well, now why does it say we're saved through wisdom? Shouldn't it say we're saved through blood? Shouldn't it say we're saved through blood? But you see, what you're, you know, the fact that you're negating here, that's the right word, is that wisdom is the Holy Spirit. That saves you. Right? And and what did what are we what does our simple understanding tell us? That a man had to remake that covenant because it got broke by a man. And it did. They want to pin it on the woman being beguiled. But it was the man who rejected her. He did not want wisdom in covenant. And so we we get that air out of the way in a new air, a male air, because we have a male air and we have a female air. That's what we have. And so from all understanding in the Old Testament, Joshua fulfilled that oath to her, which was to uphold those Ten Commandments. Now they want to tell you in all the churches that Christ died to uphold the Torah law. No, that's the polluted law and doctrine that got fed out from Israel that men wrote while captured in Babylon. And so that gets so... It's crazy how many laws there is. I've got them printed out somewhere, page after page after page. And when you start understanding the various sect of 
um, Judaism and whatnot. It is unreal what they believe of women. It's crazy what these guys believe. They believe almost like Islamists that women are nothing more like, than like a dog. She's not fit to be taught or educated. And I hit on that when I was studying the, the bran different branches of Judaism. And uh, so in Judaism is where we're said Christianity kind of spun off from. And it's from those laws written by the hand of man when they were in captivity, supposed captivity, in Babylon. Well, I'm sorry, but those are not God's law. God says, I gave you ten commandments and you couldn't follow them. <laughs> um, so you wanted to write your own law and I let you do that. But you understand you bring on your own ruination when you won't adhere to my law. And that's what we've done. And we've still got the harlot spirit bowed at man's feet. Go, no, no, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. He's our head, he's our head. Look around this earth. You can't figure it out. Right? So, again, we have wisdom, not shed blood. Unfortunately, it takes the shedding of blood to bring in that truth. And we are told that she actually restrings that bow, that covenant. And uh, there's several words I was looking at early this morning. I know what it was. It was in, um, just one second here. It was in, I think right here. Um, it was in Second Peter 3.10. Yeah, that's where it was. And it says, um, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. So it was the great noise, I believe, that I was looking at that word. You know what it has the idea of? Um, a roar, uh, a whoosh. And it says, the whoosh as like the whoosh from an arrow. I think I got the right word. I might not. Um, and the element shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So that's the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord, we're told, and I, I can't remember, is it Isaiah 34? I can never keep my passages straight. Um, that the day of the Lord is about the controversy of Zion. The controversy of Zion was concerning what you did to the daughters in covenant. You divided my pleasant land. That's identifying the daughters of Israel. They were the pleasant land. You split my covenant into two. A harlot spirit that passed to the idol of Baal husband, Lord, and God, and the other one that became the outcast that you, wouldn't, you didn't want to covenant with, right? So the great noise here, right, when the heavens pass away, the great noise is the whooshing of the arrow. We're told in Psalm 7 that she restrings her bow. She, we're told at first that she unstrung her bow. The bow is a symbol of a covenant, and we get the men shooting their arrows, Baal, <laughs> Um, in uh, Genesis um, chapter 49, verses 23 24, the archer's heirs, Baal, your husband, another name for your husbands, who were shooting words, that's your arrows, whoosh, shooting at the daughters, which is identified as the branches there. Look, the word branch up its daughter there. Uh, and they were shooting their covenant of laws. Uh, and so, in a sense, they become the destroyers of the truth, the Abaddon, the spirit that was destroying the truth. We also get the Abaddon at the end, the spirit that will destroy the lies, right? And um, so we get them shooting it, but then we're told in Psalm 7 that if these wicked men won't turn away from this lying covenant that they put in play, all right, that she would re restring her covenant. And so when we get the word here in 2 Peter 3.10, uh, we get this word, whoosh of an arrow. So there's a great battle playing out in the heavens when she reinstitutes her covenant and restrings it. We're able to fire our words off of that covenant once again, off of that bow once again. And so unfortunately, in order to bring the truth in to you and into this world, there is the sense of bloodshed in order to establish that truth. You do have to cut away, that's your foreskin, um, the harlot spirit in the land, which is indwelt in both men and women, that bows to idols, who have been taught to bow to husband as Lord and God. And they have to be cut away if they won't turn 
if they won't turn away from the lie, then God says, I do have to cut you away. Uh, and we do so with that whoosh of her arrows. Uh, we are bringing in um, the new, the, the real foundation that was denied in the beginning. Uh, in this verse, when we look the words up, we get the principle. The principles and elements that were established from the very beginning was the lie of man. Teaching himself as God and that blood washed you. Blood don't wash you. Blood may have to be shed, in fact, to restore the truth. Um, as we see through Joshua. But it's not what washes you clean. It is the water provided through the truth that washes you clean. And it will wash the bloodshed off of the daughters in Isaiah 4.4. 4. Now, you've got to be able to reason those truths out for yourself. Nobody else can do that for you. It's in here that you have to allow the Spirit to reason with this, with you. Um, you know, otherwise you're risking being cut away. Um, okay, so what verse am I in now? Okay, so I'll pick it up. Okay, so yeah. So we're saved through wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. Christ says you can get away with blaspheming me, you're not going to blaspheme the Holy One when she shows up. That's wisdom, the Spirit. Who is found sitting beside him that will make him... Okay, I've got to pause this. Sorry. Okay, we're back. Um, so we're going to move straight into chapter 10 now. Um, she, okay, so I, I've, I've got here a question mark for chapter 10. So keep this in mind as we read through it. That this is actually a future prophecy, though. It's being told to us as if it's past. And so I said sometimes when I was reading the scriptures, it felt cyclic, like we were in a, a cycle. Um, that we just kept going round and round in this cycle. And God does say, I'll pass over you seven times. Seven times. And that's got the idea of Nebuchadnezzar. She told that to Nebuchadnezzar <clears throat> when she cast him out, out from his kingdom because he was playing God. Look what all I have made. Well, he didn't make it. <laughs> Not without her. Allowing him dominion, right? But it was her law. And... So he says, look what I, what I have done. He was playing God. So she, she cut the kingdom away from him. She says, I'll give the kingdom to whom I choose. And it won't be to you men who, who exalts the heart of the spirit in your heart. I ain't giving it to you. Um, but she cuts Nebuchadnezzar away from his kingdom. And she leaves him out there for seven years. She passes over him. Right? And she's doing the same kind to man as the beast that he has become. Refusing the covenant with the Holy One, which was wisdom. <clears throat> That would save him, give him life, what not. So the idea is I'll pass over you seven times. Yeah. Um, and we teach that. Right? We teach that in the church of 7,000 years. 7,000 years is an important figure. So, um, she preserved the first formed father, Adam. Right? Of the world that was created alone so he's a creation of hers yeah not the other way around uh, and brought him out of his fall so she brings him out of his fall so it's talking almost like this is past tense but yet it's a prophecy right and gave this is and gave I think it says him power to rule all things not all things this is the crazy concept of man today she gave her dominion over the law and that law ruled the entire kingdom and governed all things he was to uphold her law and we're told he did not she is the firstborn of the kingdom and according to uh this is zachariah i forget the chapter the kingly priest and like we just said the word king is a derived it's a word made up and once you get your understanding but that he is actually considered a kingly priest and that she is the queen or the holy one, the sovereign lord. But yet together they are to rule this kingdom. And we understand how that works, right? By the verse down here, O oh, send her out of thy heavens and from the throne of thy glory that being present she may labor with me that I may know what is pleasing unto thee. It's through her that you learn God and what's pleasing to God. And it's through the law, her law, 
that you establish in the land. That will give you eternal life. Um, so, but when the unrighteous went away from her in his anger, he perished. Also in the fury wherewith he murdered his, it's his brother. Now they'll have you believe Abel's a male. They, it's his sister, the spirit of that original covenant that they cut away. They did not want her. Um, she becomes the outcast no man sought a covenant with. They did not want her law. They wanted to write their own. And it became a beast system, a law of binds. Also the understanding you're going to get in that is it becomes a very chaotic system. Uh, this system is full of chaos. Uh, don't make sense. You can't make sense of the right and wrong half the time. You watch what's going on around you. It's a very chaotic system to have to live in. Um, so we get that. Uh, so wherewith he murdered Abel, his sister, not his brother. We get a male and a female in the womb. We do not get two males. Uh, men took control of that and they began to write, just begin to completely write her out of the text. For who caused the earth being drowned with the flood? Wisdom again preserved it. And directed the course of the righteous in a piece of wood of small value. Well now, they'll have you believe it was all no and no and no. Do you really think God would put unrighteous women on that boat? It was actually her that instructed him through God, instructing the wife, yeah, of the dimensions of that ark that he would build but it came through her tongue according to the scriptures um, so moreover uh, where are we for whose cause the earth being drowned with the flood wisdom again preserved it and directed the course of the righteous in a piece of wood of small value um, and we know when you look up Noah and it would not be it would not be through Noah it would have to be through the woman's seed um, it can't be through them. It has to be through the women. Though they wrote them completely out of the text, there would have had to been a pure woman there. She would have had to be pure. Now they'll tell you Noah was pure in his generations. And indeed he probably was, otherwise he would not have been chosen. But understand, it is the woman seed that really is your true definition of purity. Without her, you've got no pure seed. Because she is wisdom that instructs you. You understand? So moreover, the nations in their wicked conspiracy being confounded, she found out the righteous and preserved her blameless unto God and kept her strong against her tender compassion towards her daughter. And she did. So moreover, the nations in their wicked conspiracies being confounded, she found out the righteous and preserved him but her that's her branch that she's got to protect to the end so in blameless is the god no guile on the tongue of men as lord and god that's guile to her that's sin to her that's iniquity on your tongue she don't want that you are equal in god's eyes she makes you equal under the law she does not make one over the other. And yes, while you are to receive that law for tongue, you are judged equally under that law. Man's law does not do that. Man will always choose a man. I mean, I, I hate to bring this stuff up, but rape cases, 99% of the time, women are found to be the liars. That's not a fair system. That's a lie. That's what that is. And men have given themselves permission to get away with that. Yeah, women lie all the time, all the time. Men never lie. I mean, they, they, they got porn for men. They got prostitution for men. But it's those women that are lying 99% of the time. If it's not 99, it's 95% of the time. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, because men have so much control. That's why they need pornography and prostitution legalized for them. That's right. Oh, you think it's legalized for us? Ooh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, boys. There's your wonderful law. There's one of the yokes, tons of yokes that she's got on her neck that she has to wear that you won't carry. <laughs> your own self-control. You can't carry it. It's on her. It's her fault. It's her fault. I have no control over my own body. Yeah, but you're manly strong. Yeah. It just, it, I'm sorry it makes me mad. The more I see, the more it makes me mad. The lies that gets told. 
Um, so when the ungodly perished, she delivered the righteous woman who fled from the fire, which fell down upon the five cities. Now, this was Lot, of course, and his daughters. Which then it becomes okay for women to sleep with their daddy. That's a pretty sick teaching. Again, sounds more like the hand of men to me. It's absolutely a disgusting thought to me as a woman. And I think most women who are not raised in a twisted type of upbringing and thinking also happens to think it's pretty sick and twisted. I also happen to think there's those that are actually embedded into that type of upbringing that looks at it and goes, this is really sick. Why is this even allowed? But hey, he says it's the law, so that's the way it's got to go down. <laughs> um, but, um, so, so again, we see Lot embedded in that, and the two daughters, and oh, the pillar of salt that his wife become because she looked back, right? We see all of that, because, um, you know, debasement is just a fun time for women and carrying a law on your neck that a man won't carry. Well, we just enjoy it so much. It's just so much fun. You know, it, it, it's something that we delight in. Let her eyes look upon Zion. Let her be defiled. That's what the men said. They wanted her under their bondage. That's right. And we see the kings, a made-up term, let us cut her cords, her bands. That's right, her law system, which was a gently flowing water is what we're told. Um, it had no wickedness in it, in the sense, it didn't have violence in it, uh, and many, many other things that the, the, this system, this law system written by men and religion, um, has brought on. It's crazy. Of whose wickedness even to this day, the wasteland that smoketh is a testimony and plants bearing fruit that never come to ripeness in a standing pillar of salt in a monument of an unbelieving soul. So they'll tell us this is Lot's wife who looked back. Ah, that's what they'll tell you. Um, she was playing man's harlot. You know, she's the ruination and she taught, the daughters apparently picked this up too. If we're to believe that they actually wanted to sleep with daddy just to have babies. Um, it's a pretty sick, twisted weave in that word. And it was weaved by the hand of men in the beginning. And she said, fine, you sickles want this type of existence and the daughters won't stand up? Fine, I'll let you have your way. But understand this, it's going to lead to your ruination. Not to your eternal salvation, but to your absolute ruination because you can't listen to us daughters of wisdom. We'll let you have your way. We'll see what, what you think at the end of all this. And that's what she says. I'll, I'll let you have what you want so that you will see what your latter end will be without me. You see it? You see what we got in the land? You know why you got it? Because you wouldn't listen to, the, to wisdom, to the women of wisdom. So for regarding not wisdom, they got not only this hurt. There we go, right there in verse 8 of chapter, what chapter are we in? 10. Uh, for, regarding not wisdom, they got not only, it says, they get, they talk like me, get, they get not only this hurt, that they knew not the things which were good, but also left behind them to the world a memorial of their foolishness, so that in the things wherein they offended, they could not so much as be hid. Well, it does say in uh, Job, that the nakedness of Sheol is laid, laid bare. Um, but that has the understanding of when the scepter is reborn in the earth that she exposes that lie. And by the exposure of that lie, she exposes the harlot spirit in the land. So she exposes the womb of Sheol is the understanding, which is what the men are at agreement with in Isaiah 28. When the overflowing scourge comes in, it's not going to hurt us. Well, I, I learned what the overflowing scour scourge was. Watch this. You know what the overflowing scourge is? It's amazing. I can't find it. Yeah, it has the idea of a tongue lashing. I guess they have so much pride that even listening to the truth from God with these words off of her covenant, it it hurts. It really hurts them. 
But I'm I'm taking this to the battle in I think it's the battle in the second heaven is where um, it's really directing our mind. But watch what it says, and it's the exact same word, scourge, that you will find in Isaiah twenty eight, Job five two. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge there we go of the tongue. Neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it comes. So what's the destruction? Well it takes us to second Peter three ten when the elements will burn with fervent heat. So it's the destruction of this system called chaos. It is built upon your false foundation called your false principles. The lie of, of this idol of God, man, you know. Woman playing the harlot bowed to that has led to this entire system. But it says, neither shall thou be afraid of the destruction when it does come in. And so what did the men say in Isaiah 28? The overflowing scourge ain't going to hurt us when it comes in because with the womb and the idea is with these women <laughs> uh, the heart of the spirit that they're, we're at agreement with we're all in full agreement that God is male um, none can testify to the truth in the land we read that uh, I can't even remember where it was um, Isaiah 58 wasn't it? Isaiah 59 it says none calleth for the truth, none calleth for justice in the earth. And that's what they're referring to. The women are in full agreement with us in this covenant. That when the overflowing scourge comes in, whoosh, those arrows whooshing by, when her covenant is restrung, it's not going to touch us. Because she's at full agreement with us <laughs> in this covenant of lies. And, and so the scourge that they're so afraid of, according to this verse in Job 5, 2, that shall be hit from the scourge of the tongue. <laughs> That's the sword. The teeth are, are your, your threshing instrument. Promise, she said, I'll make you a new threshing instrument. That's your teeth. What does she tell you an unfaithful man is in times of trouble? It's like broken teeth. You know what Bashan links you to? The word ivory. <laughs> that was her mountain that got attacked. I think it's the North Mountain that got attacked. Um, and he says, I will exalt myself to the throne of God. That's in uh, um, Isaiah 14. Right? He was an unfaithful man in her times of trouble. And it was like broken teeth to her. Bashan, ivory, her authority was just cast off on a whim. They said, it means nothing to us. We don't care we promised you. <laughs> it means nothing to us is truth. Um, so because they've made this covenant with the heartless spirit in the land, this overflowing scourge is not going to touch us because they will not be able to testify to the truth. Um, so it, it has the idea of a tongue. The tongue. Which is your sword, your word. And... Um, your teeth are your arrows whizzing by on her covenant that's been restrung, her bow. It's also why the white rider, you don't see the, the, the rider on the white horse um, with the four horsemen there. Um, you don't see her putting her arrows in, do you? She's got a bow, but it doesn't speak of her arrows. You know why? Because her arrows are hidden in the earth. That's her scepter. That's right. <laughs> that's the arrows of Ephraim. Yeah. And she loads the bow. The covenant, which was reinforced through Joshua, right? But she loads it with the daughters, who are her arrows. Whoosh! <laughs> they don't like it. It hurts. This truth hurts. They're, they're so used to just standing alone. Well, the abomination of desolation, a man inside of a man. She'll be childless. She'll have no children. They're all his. You see? And that's why... She says, fine, the burden of the Lord will become your burden. Deliver these children. And they give birth to nothing but lies. That's what they do. Then we see the daughters doing the same thing. In, uh, I believe it's Isaiah 26, it says, um, you know, the daughter of Zion um, has, um, I forget, let me look it up. I've got my Bible right here. So, um, it's Isaiah 26. I know we ain't getting far in wisdom. But I do want to be thorough, as thorough as I can, in um, the understanding that I have so far. And if I can help anybody else find the path, then that, I guess that's my job. That's my, my um, 
That's my career. Um, so what does it say? Let me see if I can find it. What does it say? Isaiah 26. It says, we have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. What's the word wind? I've said this multiple times. People are sick of hearing it, I'm sure. But it gives you the word here, 7307, and when you look it up, it means spirit, right? Wind, spirit, wind. But when you look it up in the New Testament, Strong's Greek, 417, it means empty doctrines. That's what it means. That's your allegory. Um, so we have been, we have, as it were, brought forth empty doctrines. That's what we've done. So we see the men um, in uh, Isaiah 59 uh, with their deceit, their, 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 they birthed lies in the land. And that's the weave of the, the spider's web of lies. The men weave together around the globe in this web of lies. And eventually we see her doing, weaving with them in this lie. He married himself there, the harlot that would bow to him and preach his lie. So what do have we, we have, as it were, brought forth wind. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. In due time their foot will slip. Now that's what it says. Thy dead men, <laughs> women, shall live together with thy dead body, shall they arise, awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust, for the dew is as the dew of the herb, and the earth shall cast out the dead. She'll either cast out the dead, or she'll give life to them. Now, when, again, we'll go here right quick. When we go to Micah chapter 2, what does it say? Right? So, I mean, we have conflict here going on uh, for me in the verses. So some says, well, no, we're leaving the earth. And others says, well, no, those that aren't of the earth is going to leave the earth. And yet we get the idea that we are trapped in the womb of Sheol. Okay, I'm looking for Micah. Which is. We'll get there. So we're looking at Micah chapter 2. And what does it say? And. No, I'm in the. Oh, where was it? No, I'm sure it's Micah. Okay, so, okay, I'm in the wrong chapter. That's fine. Yeah, I, I knew it was in this chapter. So what does it say? Verse 13. The breaker. Right? And it speaks of those who will rebuild Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a city of peace. It's not necessarily a location. Um, it's an area where the scepter rules from. Uh, so the breakers come up before them. They have broken up and have passed through the gate. And are gone out by it. Their queen, no their sovereign, shall pass before them in the Lord on the head of them. Yeah. So we, we see them leaving. So, you know, we get the sense of being trapped in the womb of Sheol, but um, the gate is opened up by the sovereign. Um, <clears throat> you know, from all understanding, it's the sovereign that opens that gate and leads them out. And we are told that this world is going to burn. So, I mean, we're kind of looking at first, second heaven, and it kind of gets to be a little bit... Um, you know, where is this actually playing out? Is it playing here or is it playing out there? Um, so again, we get the whiz of the arrow off of the covenant. Um, and we're told that the dragon's word, when you understand, when she was like God stands up for her children, and the dragon become it was the behemoth. Okay, this is another understanding that I've gotten over time. That at one point that Draco wasn't Draco, it was actually the heifer, the behemoth. And that would have been, it represents peace, this, this representation of animals in allegory. So the behemoth, when the daughters were in their rightful place, it was known as the behemoth. When the sons come in with the harlot, exalted, they take her throne from her, and it becomes Draco. And his word begins to rule, like this fire word comes off of his tongue and law and we're told that the antichrist has no respect for her he doesn't care about the god that she believes in and loves 
they don't care about her. They care about themselves and what they want. It says the shepherds have fed themselves to the full. And it's talking about these men who pretends to be our shepherds with the great word of God. And it really all it does is really feed them and make them rich is what it does. And gives them rights and, you know, to things that these women would never be allowed to. And, oh yeah, don't touch him. Don't touch me. I'm too holy to be touched. Oh, really? <laughs> Um, God says, you don't pretend to be holier than another. You are here to serve them. Why would you act like you're better than them, than the ones you are here to serve? And that's what these men have done. They have behaved as if they're superior, they're better, they're holier in every way. Um, so anyway, when they uh, took over her throne, um, it becomes the dragon. And we're told that when she was like God, goes up to fighting, now, is it here we're talking that, that the battle actually plays out? Or is this actually a physical battle or a spiritual battle in the second heaven that gets played out with these arrows flying by and the sword in use and, and this battle that gets played out in the second heaven wherein we're told that Satan gets cast down to the earth and we're told that there's no place found for his sword. There's no scabbard found anymore for his for his word it gets cast out right so from all understanding by that she takes back her throne and and it's interesting because draco seems to be behemoth and draco behemoth and dragon leviathan behemoth behemoth and dragon um seems to be your understanding um and um so you've got that element that you've always got to be there's so many elements you always got to be thinking about when you're looking for new new pieces of that puzzle um you know this beautiful tapestry that you know is so it's going to be so gorgeous by the time we get it done i think um but it is a matter of of sifting through uh, you know all these puzzle pieces and many of them don't fit uh, and many of them do and once you find a piece, it's like, wow, I see it now. I see where it goes. I completely understand it. And that's what it is. I said, I've always said I hate doing puzzles. My, lo my sister loves doing puzzles. I hate doing puzzles. Uh, but this one has been fun, and it has been worth it to me all the way. Um, so anyway, sorry, um, Yamron. You should know we're only going to get two chapters done. I was shooting for four. Um, so where are we? For whose cause the earth being drowned, okay, we were there, um, blameless unto God, and kept her strong against her tender compassion, against her tender compassion towards her daughter. So she, she maintains her compassion. We get that. Um, a, mo a mother will never forget her suckling child. Uh, that's where we're shown, I believe it's Isaiah 49, maybe in Hosea, but I'm pretty sure it's Isaiah 49. Um, she says, how can I forget you? You're a child of my womb. I will never forget you. So she keeps her compassion for her daughter. Um, when the ungodly perished, she delivered the righteous woman who fled from the fire, which fell down upon the five cities. Okay, we've been there. I'm sorry. I'm way behind here. Uh, for regarding not wisdom, they get not only this hurt. Okay. Um, that they knew not the things which were good, but also left behind them to the world. A memorial of their foolishness so that in the things wherein they offended they could not so much as be hit so it becomes pretty apparent right um, but wisdom delivered from pain those that attended upon her so the word here attended is really just another way of saying meditated so but but wisdom delivered from pain those that meditated thought about it pursued um, what the truth would look like written on your heart what does what would that truth look like uh, what would God look like what would God's truth look like based on this creation um, at least to some point she says you're without excuse not to understand my Godhead um, so you know based on those pieces of the puzzle we slowly put it together um, and we meditate as we do that so when the righteous fled from her brother's wrath and it was her brother's wrath that she did flee from she did actually leave us according to what we understand um, so when the righteous fled from her brother's wrath she guided her in right paths 
showed her the kingdom of God and gave her knowledge of holy things, made her rich in her travels and multiplied the fruit of her labors. So I think you're getting a, an idea of a journey here. She went on a journey. Um, and in that journey of life, and we may be looking at life in, in ex like from the beginning of our creation to the end of this creation, is really our journey in the spirit. Um, type is your understanding. But in this journey, um, she becomes wise. She grows up in this journey, is your idea here. Um, so she fled from her brother's wrath. She guided her in right paths, showed her the kingdom of God, and gave her knowledge of holy things, made her rich in her travels, and multiplied the fruit of her labors. Um, so we're told that we're a soul, but that we have the spirit upon us, that we have this eternal spirit. So if we each have a portion of that eternal spirit, um, then we're going to have at some point, perhaps, um, some knowledge of this previous um, journey that we've been on over perhaps this much longer period of time um, than the current one that we're recalling. Um, that's just speculation. Um, it seems to add up with the idea that, you know, the spirit's eternal. We have a portion of that on us. Well, wouldn't we be eternal then? <laughs> you know? Um, so that, that idea is there, hidden that. Um, so in the covetous of, uh, covetness of such as oppressed her, she stood by her and made her rich. And that's wisdom that does that. She defended her from her enemies and kept her safe from those that lay in wait. And in a sore conflict she gave her the victory that she might know the goodness, that goodness is stronger than all. And that is the truth, right? That water is going to wash the blood away from us, going to wash all the lies, the falsehood, all of these things. Now, like I said, it may take the shedding of blood to bring about the truth, but it no less makes the truth the water that washes you clean of all. You know, all that we've had to endure, all that we've had to um, you know, travel in this journey, um, including the sin, right? And that sin becomes accumulated under the blood uh, that then gets washed off of us by the water, the truth. Um, verse 13, When the righteous was sold, she forsook her not, but delivered her from sin. She went down with her into the pit. So who went into the pit? Well, that was Joseph. And that's the feminine. You know, the heavy you believe it was a man. Uh, it could have been, but we know from there, it, Joseph is the definition of all the feminine blessings. Uh, which was the North Kingdom. You know. Uh, and so, Joseph went into the pit. Well, I, I tend to think that that had to be female, because what fills the pit is water. And he drained that water, <coughs> which was her word, her law off her tongue, and he dug this pit known as Sheol, which is death, and fell into it. Well, she was tossed into the pit by her brothers who didn't want to hear that she was the sovereign of the kingdom. Actually, Joseph um, foreshadows all of that in those dreams that he has. And left her not in bonds till she brought her the scepter of the kingdom in power against those that oppressed her, as for them that had accused her, she showed them to be liars and gave her perpetual glory. That's what I think this journey is all about, right? Her attaining her power back and recovering the truth in all of that. Because at some point she got led down the wrong path, right? And in her journey she recovers that truth which was promised her that she would indeed recover that truth. Um, and it's a testing. I lay in Zion a tried and tested stone. You know, those that stand upon this one this time will never be moved. You won't be moved. This is the truth. Um, so gave her perpetual glory. That's pretty cool. Um, she delivered the righteous people and the blameless. Uh, she delivered the righteous people and the blameless seed from the nation that oppressed them. Um, she entered into the soul of the servant of the Lord. So there we got the soul, right? So she, what's that? Wisdom, the spirit. 
Wisdom the spirit. I'm actually writing this off to the side because I didn't have it. So it, it, you're getting the spirit in the soul. That's your sisters side by side. You get your two wings to an allegory to the glory that you find in Ezekiel, what is it, chapter 7, chapter 10. And when you go in and you identify those wing words, you'll get one as the bride and one as the sister. <laughs> so you got your soul and you've got your spirit kind of in, in a separate form, but they're identifying the wings. Wings are a symbol of your heavenly authority is what your wings is. And so you get them two side by side. Um, you do when you look the words up there. And so I think kind of was what we're looking here is wisdom and the soul. The spirit, wisdom, and the soul. So she delivered the righteous people, her daughters of Israel, and then by extension the sons who will follow. Um, the righteous people and blameless seed from the nation that oppressed them. She entered into the soul of the servant. Who's the servant? Israel. She's identified as her servant in passages like um, Isaiah 41, 42, 43. Now they want to throw the name Cyrus in there. Um, that just is another way of saying the anointed one. And that was Israel. It wasn't no man. Um, so she entered into the soul of the servant Israel, of the daughter, of the Lord. So she's the servant of her Lord, which is female. That's not male. And withstood dreadful kings and wonders and signs. How do you withstand that? How do you withstand um, dreadful kings with the truth? That's how you withstand them. With truth and reasoning. It says, have your sword sharpened, sharpened so that they cannot refute you. She says, I will set the case in order. You thought I was a man just like you. I'm not. I'm made in my mother's image and I have a different purpose than you. And it wasn't to bow to you. <laughs> That's not my purpose. Um, so, rendered to the righteous. So let's, let's go up here. She entered into the soul of the servant of the Lord and withstood dreadful kings in wonders and signs, rendered to the righteous a reward of their labors, guided them in a marvelous way, and was unto them for a cover by day and a light of stars in the night season. So we're told she's actually your protector and also the one that will guide you into the truth. In that pathway of truth, she will deliver her children. She will part the Red Sea. Um, we're told all of those things. Yeah, when we study um, allegory. It's getting late and it's getting long. Um, so, um, yeah, see, and it comes right into the next passage. So, render to the righteous a reward of their labors, guided them in a marvelous way, and was unto them for a cover by day and a light of stars in the night season. Brought them through the Red Sea and led them through much water, so that she could make a name for herself, it says. And the name that she makes for herself is Israel because the Spirit places herself back upon her. Wisdom does. That's, that's our understanding here. Um, we find her, we did this, it's, isn't it Isaiah 63? Where um, she calls forth the Spirit. Where is she that placed her Spirit upon Moses? Um, and she calls her forth. We did, we did a video on I'm pretty sure it's 63, it may be 66. Um, but it's she. It's she. They got the gender wrong as usual. It's always male with male. Well, that's the abomination of desolation. Um, but she drowned their enemies and cast them up out of the bottom of the deep. Therefore the righteous spoiled the ungodly and praised the holy name, O Lord, and magnified with one accord thine hand that fought for them. And she did. The problem is, is when the water, the Red Sea, come back in, it tells us that it covered her pathway over and you didn't see her. You were hid from her view. Her pathway was hid from your view. And that Red Sea becomes an admixture of doctrine. Because now there's blood mixed into it. Right? That's what we get. Um, and I'm still looking for further understanding of that concept. I am. Um, you're always going to be seeking, like every once in a while you'll be reading that these questions keeps coming into your mind. They'll keep coming into your mind. You know, don't fret. The Spirit is logging all of those questions down and is looking for the right time to hand you that answer. 
in your studies when you're you're studying then the spirit's right there there it is there it is and, and brings that question to your mind and said there's the answer you're looking for right there right there right there <laughs> um, but you got to be listening you know that's the only way you're going to receive your answers is if you're listening <laughs> so she drowned them and um cast them up out of the bottom of the deep therefore the righteous spoke the ungodly and praised thy holy name o lord and magnified with one accord thine hand that fought for them the right hand that was the presence of god i need not say any more for those who have heard it a hundred times thousands of times for wisdom opened the mouth of the dumb and made the tongues of them that cannot speak eloquent well she's made my tongue to speak i would hesitate to i would be hesitant to say eloquent in any sense of that word um yeah so that's the end of chapter 10. You know what? I am going to stop there. <laughs> or this is going to be like another two hours. Or another hour. Um, so chapter 11, chapter 12. Um, I do have the notes on. We'll pick that up in the next video. Forgive me. I thought I'd be able to do four in this. Um, but I babbled so much. I wanted to put in as much detail as I possibly can. Uh, for any newbies who might be along. Um, though according to you know my numbers and whatnot i don't have any new ones anyway um thanks for watching um i hope you watch the video i hope you go looking for uh that little book yourself sealed up in there um these verses will pull the truth together for you it ought to reason on the tablets of your heart um thanks for watching um i hope you've all had a lovely day and i pray you're blessed with an abundance of truth and thanks again.